Today we're going to be talking about wealth and whether or not God wants you to be wealthy. The question that many people have in the body of Christ, even if they're not asking it, especially if they find themselves in a place of lack and poverty, is, does God want me to be wealthy? Today, I'm going to try to answer that question with the help of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Let's get to it. Now, I don't think anyone should ever ask the question whether or not God wants them to be wealthy. I don't, I don't think that should ever be absent from your mind because you can't think of God as being a giving God. You can't think of God as being a loving God and then think that he wants you to be broke and disgusted. So, so it's never a question as to whether or not a loving God wants you to be wealthy. It's not a question of that. It's a question of whether or not you can handle the wealth that a loving God can give you. Because God is endless in wealth. He's endless in riches. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So it's never about what God can give you. It's about whether or not you can take care of whatever God can give you. Let me just say that again. It's not about what God can give you. It's about whether or not you can handle and take care of what God can give you. God will give you whatever won't destroy you. Whew. Let me say that again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God will give you whatever won't destroy you, whatever he can trust you with. That's what you can trust God to give you. Whatever God can trust you with is what you can trust God to give you. If God can't trust you with it, why would he give it to you? And I want you to remember something. God is far wiser than you are. <laughs> it, for those of you who have children, you know where I'm getting ready to go with this. Especially if you have like teenagers or if you have grown kids, you know where I'm about to go with this. There's always going to be one child out of the group <laughs> that's more responsible and that's more mature. Always. And that's going to be the child that generally mommy and daddy or whoever is going to go to when they need something done. You know people by how they do things. You're always going to have the child that they're going to do something and they're going to halfway do it and you're going to be like, okay, I know such and such did that. And then you're going to have the child, they're going to do things in such a way and they're going to do it with so much order that you're going to be like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, she did that or he did that. You know what I mean? People are known by how they do things. And so even with us, it's no different. You know which one of your children you can trust to leave as, as the babysitter with the younger kid, kid or kids if you have to go somewhere during the day. It's, let's just say it's in the summer and you have, I don't know, a meeting or something you have to go to. And you have to leave your seven-year-old at home with your 15-year-old. Okay. And maybe you also have a 16 year old. It's not impossible for a 15 year old to be more responsible to be more responsible than a 16 year old or a 16 year old to be more responsible than an 18 year old because your level of wisdom and all these wonderful things usually are not tied to age, even though people try to make that the case. We all know that's not true. Okay. Age is really just a number when it comes down to many things. So you got to go to a meeting. Somebody needs to keep your youngest. So you're going to choose who? Who are you going to choose? You're going to choose the most responsible child that you have. If you're using a child, that's what you're going to do. You're going to choose a child that you can trust. And with God, it is no different. He is not going to say, oh, well, this is my daughter. This is my son. I love them. So I'm just going to give them the biggest bank account. Even though when they had 
the last $1,000, they just completely blew it on, the, the, on a big shopping spree. But I'm just going to give them millions of dollars. That is, that would be irresponsible of him to do that. Just like it would be irresponsible for a sister who just came into millions of dollars to have a brother who's hooked on drugs. And she says, oh, I'm going to go and buy him a house. And every week I'm going to give him an allowance of 15000 because I can afford to do that. He'd be out spending money on drugs. His life would not be better for it. And so even it's that same way with us. We have to be in position to be trusted by God with, with more. You've got to be positioned for that. So for many of us, it's not a matter of God wanting you to have uh, wealth or not wanting you to have wealth. Okay. Yeah, he wants you to have wealth because he wants to be glorified in your life. But he's not going to risk giving you the wealth before you're ready for it. And you might say, well, why wouldn't I be ready for it? I'm not a recluse. I'm not impulsive. I, I try to I give. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I try to do what's right with what God has given me. So I, I should be able to expect him to give me more. And if that's you and you are a giver, let me say that again. You are a giver. You are a giver. Yeah, you should. You should expect God to bless you at some point. But it's not really just about being a giver. Because some people, you know, they'll get caught up in that. It's like, oh, I'm a giver, so I'm a tither. And so... And I'm not going to really discuss tithing today. I'm not going to get into tithing. Um, it's a very controversial topic. Um, there's much that I could teach and say about it. And so I will say that for another time. Because it is not a topic that you can just kind of visit for about a minute or so. It's something that really deserves to be taught and so i i'm not here to talk about tithing to, to teach about tithing today so i won't go there um but i will say this much um i believe that you ought to give according to how god has prospered you and that's what i'm going to say on that right now as far as tithing is concerned i'm not going to get into it okay all right so what i believe is that based upon my own experiences in life and even the experiences that others have testified about is that it is the will of God to bless you inside first. Um, in the world, we see people all the time that have reached certain levels of wealth on the outside. They have the big homes, they have the gargantuous bank accounts, and to the naked eye, it looks like they have it all together. And if you're not careful, you if you lack wisdom and prudence, you will start thinking that these people who have this massive amount of money, this massive amount of wealth, and you can see it with your natural eye, you'll be convinced that they have it all together because of the fact that they have all this money. But as a, as a believer, as a child of God, you have to be wiser than that. Um, you can't hold the world standard as the kingdom standard because it just doesn't work that way. You know, uh, God is wise and so he's all knowing. Okay, and so even the way he conducts himself as our God and as our father, as our leader, as our everything, is just going to be so much different than how things work in the world. And that is what you should expect. Never expect God to do things in your life the way you see worldly people living, that they just get all these riches and it just seemingly it doesn't always come easy for people in the world either sometimes it, it sometimes it does but not necessarily all the time most of the time it doesn't but it seems to me like people in the world many times they get rich they well the people in the world can't help but get rich if they get rich if they're not saved with a bankrupt soul because if you're not saved your soul is bankrupt so in when you are saved you have the potential 
to be extremely wealthy inside. And so that is the will of God. That's why 3 John uh, chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Beloved, above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So it is the will of God that as you are prospering in your soul, and I did do videos on the soul and healthy soul and wealthy soul. So if you want to go back and watch one and two, I did a, a two part uh, series on that. Go back and watch what the video on the soul, because it's very important that your soul be wealthy and whole. I, I visited that. So, and I'm sure in the future, by the grace of God, I'll probably do more on that because that's a very lengthy topic. But even this is a lengthy topic as well, but I'm going to try to get as much in as I can. Um, today but this is the thing you must as a child of God expect to be wealthy inside first please do not expect as a child of God to uh, have all this wealth uh, in your bank account and, and, and how you live and where you live and what you drive and then be bankrupt inside you know it just doesn't work like that with God it's just not you know God doesn't do things the way man does things a man in, in the world like I said, people can have all this money and just have this life that seems so grand. And we know inside that person is bankrupt. And how do you know they're bankrupt? Because even when, when things come out about their lives, it's always something horrible. It's always something horrendous. And, and so it just kind of reminds us that, oh, they have all this money. But, you know, they, they, they're really not uh, satisfied. That's a good word to use. I won't say happy, but they're just really not satisfied. And so I just want you to understand something as a child of God. Your, your greatest wealth will never be in your bank account. And I know that for some people that's going to be kind of hard to digest, but it's just the truth. It's not going to be in your bank account. It's not going to be in the house you live. It's not going to be the neighborhood, the car you drive. Um, it's not going to be your real estate portfolio. It is going to be in your spirit. It's going to be in your soul. The Bible says that what good will it do you to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? So that tells you a mouthful right there. It is important to God that your soul be right. It's, it's, it's just, there's no way around it. Your wealth must be inside. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard of a man, a man of God. His name is... Um, Apostle Jonathan Ferguson. Um, he's a very powerful man of God. He has a great ministry. I have followed him since 20, probably 15. And he and his wife have come so far in their ministries. Oh my goodness. I remember when they, like, when they were starting out and and when you compare where they started out to where they are today it's it's leaps and bounds let me tell you something and they are a powerful kingdom couple uh, and when i say uh, powerful and wealthy inside and out so uh, you know check them out you won't be you won't be sorry uh, great uh, kingdom couple and doing many things for the kingdom of god great testimony of how God has brought them so far too. And one of the things I heard him say was if you are, if God is going to really make someone wealthy, it starts on the inside. And if you are growing in wealth in your soul, in your spirit, uh, expect that same wealth to show up in the natural, in natural things, in your finances. You understand what I'm saying? It starts inside of you because if it didn't start inside of you, God would not be able to trust you with anything on the outside. God does things in order, just like how babies must crawl before they walk. This is the same thing with you. you. You've got to come to a place where you can be trusted with this, the smaller things first. And then when God sees that you're able to, to receive of him from the, from the smaller place, then he can elevate you and take you to that next place. It is not the will of God that people be um, without. It's not the will of God that you be without. But it's also not the will of God that you reach the high place, that you reach the high place, and be wealthy on the outside and be broke on the inside. And there are some people, I believe, that 
we're not in position and in a position where God could really help them to grow on the inside and make them wealthy before they became wealthy on the um on the outside and because they didn't allow him to do that they they suffer now everything about their lives are constantly being questioned and i'm not going to call any names because i don't think that would be appropriate but i think that if you are wise enough and you just really think about what i just said you could think of some people today and these are people who are saved but they may not have allowed god to do the work that he wanted to do in them to get them to where to that greatest level of wealth that he wants them to be in if you look in the book of James in the first chapter, um, it actually says that if you let patience have her perfect work, then you'll be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. What it's referring to is, is that there's a work of God being done in your life. And if you can allow that work through patience, if you can allow God to work things out of you, he can work things in you that can allow you to come to a place that's wealthy. And that place of wealth will start inside of you, spill over into the outside. And when we talk about wealth on the inside, it does have to do with great levels of wisdom. Great levels of wisdom. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that God lays up sound wisdom for the wise. Notice what it says, he lays it up. That suggests that he puts it aside. That he's literally waiting for you to reach to a certain level and then he gives it to you. The Bible also tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. That's in the book of Proverbs. It's telling you that wisdom is the principal thing. So that means that as you begin to grow in God, you grow in wisdom. And as you grow in wisdom, you grow in favor. And when you're growing in wisdom, that means you're growing in an understanding of what God expects from you and what God wants from you and how you can be positioned to do the things that he would have you to do your own will becomes something that's no longer important and as jesus was and when jesus said nevertheless not my will but your will be done your will is no longer important to you it is the will of god that takes center stage when a person begins to grow in wisdom i want you to consider something for a minute if you ask yourself a question which do which is more important to me to have a, a, a billion dollars in my bank account or to have a right standing growing healthy and whole relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and if you say I don't know if I can answer that then you don't need those you don't need that those billions of dollars in your bank account because that means if you had them you would not continue to grow God wants to give riches to people who have riches inside of them and understand that the riches that are inside of him of them are far more important than those riches on the, on the on the outside i want you to consider jeff bezos and what's the other one bill gates i hate to say the other one the other person bill gates um, Warren Buffett, Buffett and e I, I should have said Elon Musk first because I believe he's the most the richest man in the United States with not the world. Um, th these are men who have lots of money. The one thing they probably all have in common is not one of them as far as I know is a believer. Think about that for a minute. Now think about something else that they die tomorrow. God forbid and I'm just speaking here loosely if, if something happened to them. Are they going to take all that money with them? Nope. Somebody back here would have a good time with it. <laughs> but they're not taking that. They're not taking that with them. And so it will be with you. I don't care what you amassed here. I don't care what type of fortunes you have. You're not going to take it with you. It will not go with you. So these are things that you need to keep in mind when you start thinking, well, how come I'm not farther along? And, you know, God is royalty and he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords, you know, and, and, and there's nothing he can't do. And he has everything. He has a cattle on a thousand hills. There's nothing that he can't do. Yeah, there's nothing that he can't do. But he's also 
the wisest of all. And he knows what you can handle and what you can't. You don't. He knows what you can handle and what you cannot. There's some people that because they became wealthy, they ended their life. You might always think that because someone becomes wealthy, that's when all the great things start for them and that's when life becomes so much richer because they become rich. But I want you to think about something for a moment. There's some people out there that because they are wealthy, they're going to bust hell wide open because their, mo their money is going to become and has become their God. And there's people out there that you probably look up to. Uh, they're celebrities. Their, their money is literally their God. For some people, the worst thing that can happen to them is that they become wealthy. If they're not wealthy in their soul, if they're, if they're not wealthy in relationship with the Lord, and, and, you know, it may sound like a simple thing that I'm saying. It sound, may sound far reaching, but I'm telling you. One of the worst things that can happen to some people is that they get a lot of money. And they weren't ready for it. They get a lot of money and they were bankrupt inside. You should you should want to have a lot of wealth. And I'm telling you right now, the Lord wants you to be wealthy. But he also wants you to want him more than the wealth. He wants you to be wise enough to say, you know what? It will, it, it'll be nice to be able to have a big house where I can invite all my family and friends to come and we gather and feast and do all these great things. It would be nice to have billions of dollars so that I could go all around the world and feed the hungry and just help the disadvantaged. And that, all that sounds good. And that's wonderful. And if you really are sincere and you mean that, but the first thing that you're concerned about is your relationship with the Most High God and making sure that that's rich, that you're rich in that understanding of who he is, that you're rich in the understanding of his expectation from you, you might get to that place. I'm getting ready to give you some scripture. Okay, Jeremiah, you can go to Jeremiah now or whenever you get time. Jeremiah 9. 23 and 24. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Lord says. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Let me say that again. But let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. So, I guess those words just backed up everything that I just said. It is the will of God that he be the most important thing that if you're going to brag about anything that word glory is talking about credit if you're going to give credit to anything if you're going to boast about something you should be boasting about the fact that god has done this for you that god is doing this for you that god is great god is good god is powerful that he's greater than everything he's 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 the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to you not a big bank account a big bank account will never be the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to you a big house up on the hill god forbid that listen if that's the greatest thing that ever happened to you is that you got a big house on a hill that a fire could break out in and it could burn down and nobody ever known it was there there? Come on now. Anything that you're going to leave behind on the face of this earth is not the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Listen, God is today. He's yesterday, today, and forever. That's what you need to glory in. One day you won't be here no, anymore. And none of this stuff will matter. I don't, and I don't, okay, here, you know, I'm about to say this, and hopefully nobody will get their feelings hurt. But even when people start talking about getting married and all these great things, and having a husband and having a wife is a wonderful thing. I've been married for a long time, okay? I love my husband. 
but in this li after this life is over, that's going to be over too. The only thing that lasts forever is your relationship with your creator. So if you're going to glory in anything, glory in that, no matter what you have, the most important thing that you will ever have in this life is the Lord, his hand upon you, his spirit within you, if you belong to him. So does he want you to be wealthy? Yes. If you belong to him, you are wealthy. And hopefully that wealth is growing in leaps and bounds. And while that wealth, that beautiful wealth, that golden beautiful wealth, that light, that fire that's inside of you, as that, as that continues to grow, it's gonna spill over to the outside. And you will be extremely wealthy out there too. And you know something else? He'll be able to trust you with it because you're gonna be so wise that your life is gonna say, people will say, oh wow, this one or that one, they have so much. But you know what I really liked about them? All the things they have are not more important to them than their relationship with the Lord. And because of that, it just seems like he just continuously blesses them. Be blessed. In Jesus' name.